So you open up Genshin Impact, you log into the game, you head over to the Wishes, you do a 10 wish, and you end up pulling Kaching. Now you're super excited, but you've only been playing the game for a week and you know nothing about this character. So that's why you're here and you're here to figure out exactly how to use her and what she can actually do. So in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down everything Kaching is capable of. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. Now for her normal attack, she performs up to 5 rapid strikes. For her charge attack, she consumes a certain amount of stamina to unleash 2 rapid sword strikes. Now this does the majority of damage in high DPS builds and high crit rate builds. For the last kind of normal attack, we have the plunging attack. Now this one is usually when you're in the air and you can do a plunge attack. This plunges from midair to strike the ground below, damaging enemies along with the path and dealing AoE damage upon impact. Now for Kaching's Elemental Burst, we have Stellar Restoration. This hurls a lightning stiletto that inhales her enemy like swift thunder. When the stiletto hits the target, it deals electro damage to enemies and hits a small AoE and places a stiletto mark on the spot hit. Now this mechanism is extremely useful, especially when you re need to reach high places that you can't normally get. So it's not just used for combat. You can use it to get Geoculuses that are out of range. You can use it to get Animoculuses that are out of range. Things like that, even just climbing up a little bit, instead of having to climb up the normal way, you can actually just teleport up there and it makes life a lot easier. Even though it's not really the way she's intended to be used, it's still very useful. Now do keep in mind, if she uses Stellar Restoration again, she will blink to the location of the mark and unleash one attack that deals AoE electric damage. When the blinking to a stiletto that is thrown from a holding attack, Kaching can leap across obstructing terrain. Also, if Kaching uses a charge attack, she will ignite a series of thundering cuts at the mark's location dealing AoE electro damage. This is very nice and very useful, and you'll see a lot of situations where this will come in handy. Now for Kaching's ultimate is Steward Sword. This is absolutely ridiculous, my personal favorite looking, but we're going to hold that aside. We're going to hold my feelings and thoughts about it that aside, and we're just going to read you the facts real quick. Kaching unleashes the power of lightning dealing electro damage in an AoE. She then blends into shadow of her blaze, striking a series of thunderclap blows to nearby enemies simultaneously that deal multiple instances of electro damage. The final attack deals massive AoE electro damage. Now this is pretty straightforward. There's nothing, there's no specific way to use this. You can just stand in the middle of a bunch of enemies and just go absolutely crazy on them. This does deal a lot of damage, especially the higher that you can level this talent up as you progress and the higher you level her up. So she also has a passive talent that within 5 seconds of recasting Stellar Restoration while a Lightning Stiletto is present, Kaching's normal and charge attacks will be converted to Electro Damage. Now basically what this means is, while the Stiletto is still on the battlefield, you can actually convert all of your normal and charge attacks into Electro Damage, which is very useful, especially if you're using a Water character or a Pyro character as support, mostly, to get that extra Elemental Damage bonus. So after you reach Ascension Phase 4, she unlocks Aristocratic Dignity. When casting Steward Sword, Kaching's crit rate is increased by 15% and her energy recharge is increased by 15%. This effect lasts for 8 seconds. This is why a lot of people like to run crit rate and crit damage on Kaching, because she does get a lot of bonuses to crit rate and crit damage. So they try to take advantage of that as much as they can. And I understand as a free-to-play player, it's very difficult to max out a whole bunch of crit rate and crit damage artifacts. For me, I personally found a lot of attack artifacts, so I'm using her as a regular physical damage rather than a crit rate. She also has one more passive talent that when she's dispatched on an expedition in leeway, Time consumed is reduced by 25%. This isn't going to be much useful to most of us as Kaching is a 5 star and it would kind of go to waste if she was just out doing expeditions, you know, finding crystal chunks and white iron chunks for us the entire time. That's a huge waste of a 5 star character. I do not recommend you do this just because she has the passive. You can get somebody like Chong Young who does the exact same thing and he's a 4 star character that you're more than likely not going to use in this build. So for a sword as a free to play Kaching player, you're going to want to use something that has attack as its main stat. So you can use the flute, you can also use prototype Rancar, or you can use Lion's Roar. Now I can understand not everybody has these because you do get kind of lucky when you pull these. However, prototype Rancar is free to play. It, you get it straight off early up in the game, so you can definitely use that. If not, you can also use Harbringer of Dawn. This does give you an insane crit rate amount when your health is above 90%. So also take that into consideration when you are a free to play player. As far as artifacts, with Kaching, you do want to go for mostly crit rate and crit damage, considering that it's her specialty. However, this is a free-to-play build, and that's what we're mainly going to be focusing on. Don't worry about crit rate and crit damage. Don't go for an artifact just because it has some crit rate in it, because that is a complete waste. If the main stat is HP, 
and it gives you a little bit of bonus crit rate it's definitely not worth it so if all you can get on kaching is attack it's actually not the end of the world especially if you can keep her maxed out for you know your adventure rank level so i'm adventure rank level 30 and she is up to level 60 right now now she does do insane amounts of damage and she can clear through almost anybody inside of the entire game at my world level and i don't even have max crit rate on her i just using her as attack it's not quite as good but i'm still putting out a lot of damage and she's definitely not having trouble getting through any of the enemies so we're not going to be worrying about constellation in today's video and that is because most of us are free to play we're not going to be doing that i'm just going to be showing her off as a new character so we're not going to be getting into constellations and everything in depth but constellations are there you can obviously just go in and look at her in the menu i might cover it in a different video but as a free to play player it's not important to me i'm not worried about constellation and i don't think that it's that important especially for free to play players now do keep in mind that kaching does specialize in crit rate and crit damage so you do want to get that crit rate up as high as you can but like i said before don't actually worry about it if you can't but that is her specialty so if you do get a lot of items that have main stat as crit rate or crit damage a main stat of crit damage and a side stat of crit rate or vice versa you definitely want to slap those on her because she does absolutely insane especially in the later on ascensions she does even more damage because she gets more crit rate and more crit damage so do take that into consideration when making a free to play kaching build but yeah guys, it looks like that is actually going to wrap it all up for today's video. And if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe. That would mean the world to me. These videos do take some time to edit and do take some time to make. I also do appreciate comments. Comments is what's basically keeping my channel alive right now. I mean, because I'm not making revenue on any of these videos. So leaving a comment actually really encourages me and makes me want to continue to upload videos like this. So if you do really enjoy these videos, please comment something. Something that'll make me, you know, want to keep doing this and keep me motivated. So... Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.